Good morning. My name is Pastor Lori from the Church, Chetwin Church of the Nazarene. Welcome to our service this morning. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we thank you for the people that you have placed in our lives, those people who come alongside us to encourage us, to help us fulfill your commission. Let us never grow weary of doing well or doing your will. Bless our efforts and strengthen us for the days ahead. Amen. In May of 1953, two men became the first in history to climb Mount Everest. Edmund Hillary, a New Zealand beekeeper and an explorer, and a man named Tenzing Norgay, his Sherpa guide from Nepal. Hillary's name is famous for this inspiring achievement, but how many of us remember Tenzing Norgay? We should, because on the descent from the 29,000-foot summit, Hillary slipped and began sliding down the very steep, icy side of the mountain. He would have fallen to his death, except that Tenzig instinctively dug in his ice axe and braced himself for the sudden pull of a rope linking them together and saving Hillary's life. Back at base camp, reporters made a great deal over what they called Tenzig's heroism. But Ten Tenzig's only response was, mountain climbers always help each other. He couldn't see why that should be considered extraordinary. It would have been extraordinary if he hadn't tried to save his friend. Mountain climbers always help each other. It's a matter of life and death, but that truth also applies equally to the rest of us as well. As human beings, we have been created to benefit from a group of mutually supportive relationships that nurture and strengthen us. God's gifts to us in the form of family, friends, and communities. They are just as life-saving emotionally and spiritually. In fact, the church is the best example of that vital reality. As taught, just as all the parts of the human body, our eyes, ears, hands, and even its weaker or less honorable members, rely on one another and work together. So is that also true of the body of Christ. We need each other in order to become whole and to live in the fullness of God's blessing. The Old Testament has its own demonstration of this truth, found in a story from the book of Exodus. Exodus 17, 8 to 13. While the people of Israel were still at Rephidim, the warriors of Amalek attacked them. Moses commanded Joshua, choose some men to go out and fight the army of Amalek for us. Tomorrow I will stand at the top of the hill holding the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did what Moses had commanded and fought the army of Amalek. Meanwhile, Moses, Aaron, and Hur climbed to the top of a nearby hill. As long as Moses held up the staff in his hand, the Israelites had the advantage. But whenever he dropped his hand, the Amalekites gained the advantage. Moses' arms soon became so tired he could no longer hold them up. So Aaron and Hur found a stone for him to sit on. Then they stood on each side of Moses, holding up his hands. So his hands held steady until sunset. As a result, Joshua overwhelmed the army of Amalek in battle. We have this very simple, memorable illustration of our need for each other and the crucial difference that it makes. In the very next passage in Exodus, we're told the story of Moses' father-in-law, Jethro, who visited Israel at Mount Sinai and observed as Moses was overwhelmed by trying to govern the people single-handedly. Jethro could see that he needed to delegate responsibility and appoint other capable men to help him. Moses did as Jethro suggested, and it solved the problem. The point was made once again, we need each other, and that's as it should be. Jesus honored this truth by forming a band of apostles who had one another for support and encouragement. He even sent 12 out, two by two, not singly, when he commissioned them to go out on their own to preach and heal the sick in Mark chapter 6, verse 7 to 13. He never intended there to be any solitary disciples because he knew very well 
that we need one another to become our very best, healthiest selves. Jesus also knew that there was strength in numbers. In just one example of this principle, it's an amazing fact that a draft horse working alone is only capable of pulling about two tons. But two horses harnessed together, pulling together, can move over 20 tons. One person serving the Lord is only able to do so much with their gifts, graces, and time. But working together with other believers, the result can be multiplied. God created the church with that reality in mind. There are over 60 verses in the New Testament using the phrase one another, admonishing us to live this out, to serve each other, to honor others over ourselves, to pray for one another, to encourage, to forgive, to bear one another's burdens, and in many other ways to help each other. God clearly wants us to live out this shared life together for the sake of establishing his kingdom and for our own blessing. Many of us are familiar with the Greek word koinonia, which is commonly interpreted as fellowship. But it is much more than just socializing or church potluck dinners. In three out of the four occurrences in the New Testament, the word conveys the idea of a kind of close camaraderie that is created through shared commitment and sacrifice. In secular terms, we sometimes call it team spirit. In the church, it becomes close Christian fellowship formed through our dedication to God by living faithfully in His will. Christ-like love costs us something of ourselves, but God honors that sacrifice with His blessing. Jesus demonstrated this truth more powerfully than anyone by willingly sacrificing His life for us. His disciples experienced that firsthand and they lived it out passionately even to the point of their own deaths. Love demands sacrifice. In Hebrews 10, 24 to 25, we read, Let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. And so we are given a powerful image of Aaron and her standing on either side of Moses, holding up his staff and enabling Israel to prevail in battle. It's a very simple illustration of our need for one another's help. Let's take it to heart and let's look for ways in which we can be there for one another, to give of ourselves and to love and to bless each other for the glory of God and the coming of his kingdom.